Blessed are you, my Lord and God, maker, creator of all the universe. My name is His Highness Igwe Christopher Chukwemaka Ejofo, and I am from Oyofo Oye, the Igwe from the year 2008. I want to actually talk about what's happening in Nigeria right now. As we all know, uh, the young Mazin Namdikalo had been arrested and put in jail. And this has caused an uproar everywhere in our country. And a lot of people do not understand. As the last standing ADC to His, his Excellency Udmegu Ojuku, and I was at his burial at uh, Newi during the um, uh, period that President Jonathan was in power. And I had the privilege of making the final farewell speech on behalf of what Biafra stood for in uh, General Ojuku's time. And I can say I speak authoritatively as one who has been handed the button of uh, Biafra, at least memory of Biafra, re retains in my heart. I would like to first of all condole everyone for what has happened to our brother, uh, Mazin Namdi Kalu. A lot of people do not understand that a lot of things that happen today in the world that we live in are things that have already been written in the book of life. Uh, some of us are acquainted with the scriptures, others are not. I was privileged in Biafra to have an, had an encounter with an angel because I was desperately desirable to know why the God Almighty, who was the creator of all the universe, allowed this atrocity of mass killings to be unleashed upon us by the people from the north, supported by Britain and a lot of allies of the West. And we really suffered, and there's no turning back. We suffered, and at the end of the war, we lost everything, virtually become a, a state with no wealth, with nothing. And a lot of people don't understand that what's happening today is as a result of that thing that happened in the 60s and 70s. Therefore, I think it's wonderful for me to come over and speak to you all about it, and for you to be patiently to enough, uh, patient enough to listen to what I'm going to say. First of all, this issue of Biafra was never caused by we, the Igbo people. I was born in the north of Nigeria. My parents lived at Zaria. I was privileged to go to St. John's College and from there to military school in Zaria. And fortunate for me to be selected to travel to United Kingdom at the age of 15 to study military in the military academy at Harrogate. And of course, came back to Nigeria in 65, only to uh, encounter another war, civil war that was never expected. A lot of people do not understand that this whole setting was actually a provocation that was caused after Nigeria was amalgamated with the North and the Southern Protectorates. And those of us who lived in the north of Nigeria, my father used to work in Gaskia Corporation in Samaru, Zaria. And a lot of the Igbo people were actually very, very well educated in, for the time of that period of time of, the, of, the, of our era. And the British people employed them, gave them jobs as you know, railway workers, road builders, merchants, all sorts of things. And the people themselves were enterprising. Unfortunately for the people of the North, they had come from uh, a civilization which had lost uh, their Ottoman Empire before the Second World War. And there was a lot of poverty uh, among the Northerners. And a lot of them really did not have Western education. And there was no comparison between uh, Western and and their education, which was based on Arabic system. So therefore, what happened was that when our Igbos came over to the south and Yorubas and other people from the, uh, the th other regions of Nigeria, because three regions, north, east and west, um, the uh, favor of giving employment went to those southerners because they were those who actually adopted the Christian 
way of doing things and accepted the religion and it, and it, and teachings of the white European uh, partners. So that's what caused the whole problem. And we do not know that this uh, issue started because uh, the giant leader of the North, the prominent Sadhana of Sokoto, he was the Emmy of the North. Dr. Zika and uh, Namdi Aziki was the Premier of the, of the East, and uh, Abafemi Awelua was Premier of the West. And basically what had happened was that the people of the North were feeling slightly dismayed because a lot of the jobs that were in the railways and all the other things were actually uh, run by the Southerners and they did not know really how to uh, take over from our people. So I think that the biggest and one worst error was the way that he, the Premier of the North, uh, the late Sadan of Sokoto, bluntly, without diplomacy, made his hatred of Ndibo known to the world. And I think when you look at the setting between the Philistines and the uh, Israelites in those days, and, and the giant Goliath came up and, and challenged all the Israelites, say, any of you who is the champion, come over and face me. And that's exactly what Sadana did. He challenged Ndibo, tell them he was going to sack every one of them, get rid of them, sh uh, throw them back, and make sure that all the jobs are taken over by the northerners. And of course, this was a big, blunt challenge to a lot of people. And he was very powerful. He had problem against the Plateau people. He had problem against the Adamawa people. He had problem against the people from Ilorin. He was trying to establish himself all over the place. And basically, he created an atmosphere of enmity that should never have existed. Because I lived in the north. I had friends who were houses. I had friends, and my father was very well liked. And really, we lived in a peaceful time. But I think the utterances of Sedona of Sokoto was really the problem that triggered all this thing. And of course, I was in the United Kingdom when all the things got worse during the census and crisis and all the rest of it. By the time I came back in 1965, the setting was ready for a crisis. So the big giant of uh, the North uh, made all these noises. And a little boy called Nzogo was like the David uh, who decided to challenge the Goliath. And, and he did what he did over two Goliaths, and, and that caused an uproar. The people of the North were angry, and they said this young uh, uh, David uh, who had destroyed Goliath, our uh, Sadana, uh, must pay for it. And of course, it's a long story. I'm going to stop there because at the moment, what happened was that the people of the North, rather than for them to uh, uh, be cautious about the whole thing and know how to work things with us peacefully, decided to go into riots and killings and all the rest of it. And of course, those are the things that triggered Biafra. Biafra was never planned to come into existence. We, 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 we were not ready for Biafra. We had actually no weapons. We had nothing. So when Biafra came, we were taken by surprise uh, because we thought that the Britain would not allow a, a war to be unleashed against us from the people who were our own brothers and sisters, the people who had worked with and lived in place with. So really, that is the reason why that Biafra war came. So we lost the war, we lost everything. And rather than reconciliation to actually make the whole thing better, the reconciliation was such that they impoverished the entire people of the East and we had no money, we had nothing, and people decided to start doing many things which they did to make their living come into right. Um, right. But basically, you can see that at that sort of stage, how, what exactly can you do? And, and then the subsequent regimes that took over in Nigeria, ruling it, rather than for them to consolidate with the eastern Nigeria, decided that they were going to continue with Sadana's uh, plot that 
they were going to uh, annihilate and remove uh, our uh, coexistence in Nigeria. And therefore, we had no potent positions. We never became president of Nigeria. We never had any big, massive positions. And of course, human beings are human beings, and, and they come and they react to it. I was given uh, a message in Biafra by an angel, and the angel has already predicted everything that was going to happen, how Biafra was going to fall and everything. And he told us that when the time comes, we should not challenge these people. He said to me, first of all, rebuild your land. When you rebuild your land, all the things that were damaged, you you structure your house, you get your houses rebuilt, all the things you can do, infrastructures and everything you can do, work together as a family. Stop worshipping idols. Do the things that are necessary so that your land can be cleansed and God will accept you. And that is really why, since I came back, I have faced trying to rebuild my father's home, doing things for my community, helping all the neighbors and the villages and everything. Really, my mind has not been set in national uh, issues because there's time for everything. And anybody who goes in the time that God has not ordained is actually causing trouble for himself. So I'm saying this to you all. Let everybody calm down. Let everybody sit down. And let us quietly think about how to go about to resolve this issue. God is in charge and he will make sure that we never lose in the end. Thank you for listening.